Tonight, a look on the ground. Abaco devastated by Dorian. People begging for help as first responders on that island say everyone has to leave. WPTV News Channel 5's anchor Michael Williams traveled to Abaco over the weekend, just 150 miles away. Great Abaco sits largely in ruin tonight. Great Abaco, a paradise one week. A post-apocalyptic landscape today, bulldozed by Hurricane Dorian. Trees that once waved in tropical breezes snapped like sticks in its 185 mile per hour winds. Where and how does one even begin to recover? We began at Treasure Key Airfield, where we landed today. Lines of people waiting to get out, cries for help going up. Natasha waits for a plane with her toddler son. They tell me they bring stuff over here, but we can't find nothing. Have you eaten and had food for the last few days? Yes, I have. This, this, this is what you're living on right now, water and a little bit of food. Only water. Now I'm hungry, I can find nothing to eat. The pleas are attracting a private air force. Supplies are streaming in. West Palm Beach Family Church Pastor Kevin Mahoney is flying in and out constantly. I brought uh, 1,000 pounds in this morning. We're staging out of the North County Airport and uh, just asking people to bring food and water supplies. We hitched a ride with the North Abaco Island Fire Chief Colin Albury farther south, every mile revealing new misery, destruction piled atop devastation. There's nothing, there's nothing left. I spoke to the head of the power company. It's gonna be a year before we can get a power on. The water company, their tanks are destroyed over a year for water. This one scene alone helps sum up the enormity of the crisis. A firehouse smashed. That huge fire cap tossed around like a toy. Power lines down all over the island. And behind me, a tornado swept through this part of Treasure Key on Great Abaco, flattening a home to its foundation. Beyond it, a roof torn off, uninhabitable. We need help. We need, you know, if you guys could get together and help us. We need it. Sorry. It's... Oh, man, I'm just, thank God you guys are here to document this. It's been rough. It's rough. Uh -uh. And farther into Treasure Key, we saw cars tossed like toys, an ambulance flipped on its side, power lines that are now just twisted piles of wire, and homes like the one where Keith and Stewart stayed literally turned inside out. You see all the, all the ceilings are down and wet, so as we were trying to get out, we was here in this bathroom. How high was the water? Outside, it was about this, up this height, over that wood. So that's what frightened everybody. We was in here, and it started to seep in a bit through the windows. The clock on survival ticks louder each day for some. I saw people searching for coconuts, the only food and liquid they said they could find. I thank God because God sent you all to appreciate us, give us some water. You ain't got nobody to come to speak to us. To you stand. need water, you need food. Everything close, try to get make it. Get out is the cry, and one civil aviation boss here said the Bahamian government is picking up the pace of flights to Nassau and other locales. Treasure Sands Resort Manager Joshua Stivers and his dog Clyde are leaving today, but no horizon will be far enough to erase the memory of what he felt and saw. I was in the bathtub with a mattress blocking between me and the bathtub. My front door got sucked in and the winds just came in, so I just took him up to the bathroom. We threw the mattress in the bathroom and just kind of sat in the tub for the first round. Uh, we had a dead body on the road that we covered and put blocks around her. It was devastating, uh, something you never forget. The fortunate leave, others uh, wait their turn, probably. and an entire island asks for help that will be the ultimate test of the human spirit and cooperation today, tomorrow, and for many years to come. Over the weekend, we did see a small contingent of Royal Marines in Abaco. Help is coming. They are promised, the people are, but the overwhelming sentiment is that some 13 to 14,000 people living or working on Abaco need to leave because for a long time to come, there is simply nothing to sustain them. And Michael, as we saw in your piece there, there are no quick fixes here. None at all. Remember Hurricane Andrew, which we all, of course, how can we forget, 1992. And for the first few weeks, people bringing in private supplies, doing what they could, until President George H.W. Bush said, I'm bringing the U.S. Army in to deal with this, with the logistics, the supply lines, the rebuild. People were struggling. It was only when they were able to impose military logistics that we started really moving forward. 
They're going to need a massive Bahamian government effort. Critics tonight are wondering if they're up to it. And that is the huge challenge that's going to last for many, many years. All that is a death toll is expected to continue to climb. And you said just as before we came to air in your from your vantage point, there was really no building untouched or unscathed. There was no construction that really withstood this. I saw at a resort, the edifices, the, the shell still there. Right. But it, for instance, is this one survivor's home? The home itself, if you looked at the outside, looked okay. The storm surge got him. It was like somebody put his house into a blender and then spat it all out. Wow. Yeah, just unbelievable. He was minutes from dying, the water up to here. And he had to swim to a nearby home. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, Michael. Michael, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah.